Welcome to another episode of the Presale Pulse Live, where we talk about everything resale and presale in Metro Vancouver. I'm Ryan Lalonde, and I'm joined by real estate marketer assassin extraordinaire. Oh, I like that. We should stick with that one. I was I was working on a few. Feel like that one just represented who you are. I'm going to take that as a compliment. <laughs> Uh, as always, the pre-sale pulse is all about recapping some of the industry gossip and of course all the great data that's happened uh, throughout the month of February. Suze, why don't we first start with a rundown recap of everything that we're going to hit today. Uh, first off, I think in maybe one of the most important shares is that we are 1% off the high watermark that was set in uh, 2017 when it comes to resale prices. Uh, we're going to look at the month over month incredible releases of density in key marketplaces and how that's playing a huge role in the buildup of supply of inventory. And then we're also going to take a quick look at some of the upcoming projects that we have in Marketplace. This is going to include Concord Metrotown and also we're going to take a look at Bosa's Central Park House uh, also coming to Metrotown. So before we move into the pre-sale data, why don't we touch a little bit on the macro factors. Ryan, what are you seeing out there? What do we need to be paying attention to? I think the most important thing is to, to recognize that 6,500 transactions happened locally last month. That's one of the highest numbers that we've seen between the Fraser Valley and Metro Vancouver in quite some time. Uh, we're also looking at unemployment rate. It's uh, it's edged up to 8%. Uh, that's obviously 0.8% uh, higher than we were just a few months ago. Uh, social gathering, these restrictions are still in play. What becomes really important though is that the pressure that we're now seeing to open up borders come July, August, and also the uh, the benefit of vaccinations and how that begins to really unlock a lot of the travel destinations that so many of us are hoping uh, to, to partake in. Canadian dollar is really pushing up. We're sitting at just under 80 cents. That's an incredible improvement to where we were just three years ago. And then of course, the, the tech market. Uh, we've seen some hiccups in that over the last 14 days, and that was followed with some minor uh, minor adjustments in the bond markets. And as a result, we saw five the five-year fixed change. A great recap. Uh, let's dive into the pre-sale numbers now. We saw nine projects released in the month of February, almost 1,700 units. Five of those projects were new concrete uh, projects, which is really exciting to see that release into our inventory. We haven't seen uh, this number of units and projects in a single month since November of 2018, which is uh, incredible incredible to think about. Very active marketplace, uh, Burnaby and West Coquitlam. Of course, we're seeing a ton of inventory there. Clearly, you know, the investors back and, uh, and absorptions are strong. So we've seen a 45% transaction rate of all inventory that, that found its way into the marketplace. That's a fantastic number to be back at. It's kind of the sweet spot, right? When you think about it, uh, when we go back to 2017, our uh, initial month releases were over 90%, which is why we saw the price escalation the way that we did. So 45, 50%, that's the sweet spot for us as a market. Susanna, let's talk a little bit about what's to come in March. Uh, now we have uh, just over 1,200 units that are expected uh, for the next 30 days, three new concrete towers that are, that are going to be entering our marketplace, and four townhouses, uh, four townhouse sites. You know, the Concord, which has been previewing for some time, is going to be taking uh, its first steps towards its sales program. We also know that BOSA is coming very quickly. Uh, our expectation is, is that uh, the buyer pools within those marketplace are ever changing right now. We know that that whale agent that's representing that outside investor has played a huge role in these markets over the last 90 days. Our expectation is, is, is that that may change and we're going to see a push towards those end users because some of the brands that are coming to market have had such great success building towards local buyers. So when we think about that absorption rate month, one of the projects that was released in February was of course our own Smith & Farrow by Bafo. Almost 200 homes sold uh, in essentially less than a month, which is incredible and, and certainly exceeded our expectations. Very optimistic about how the rest of that program is going to go. We have to also touch on, I think, Telford by Intracorp. Uh, incredible offering. They've had just a knock out of the park in terms of sales absorption. Over 70% absorbed within a very short period of time. We're talking, you know, less than a few months. Interesting pricing strategy. They, they really went after value. They placed that in line with resale in the marketplace. And I think a big part of that just uh, was a result of what's coming next in that market. You have Concord and Bosa with really unique offerings. Uh, I think the expectation was let's move our inventory fast. Uh, and make sure that we're out of the way of some of those really interesting offerings to come. We've got uh, Concord and Boza going head to head in Metro Town. Uh, we expect that market to be about 1200 bucks a square foot, if not perhaps a, a little bit higher. Uh, both developers have a very strong loyal following. Boza certainly does. 
They're definitely a premium offering, 25% uh, deposit, which is also a little bit higher in the market than we're used to seeing, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how, how that's uh, received. They've done such a great job over the past decade of really building up what, what BOSA means, uh, both in terms of quality of bill, but then also the, the land that they need to go after. So uh, fantastic location. Uh, expectation is, is that that deposit is not going to get in the way of absorptions for them. Let's spend a little bit of time talking about Concord Metro Town as well. Now, this is an incredible offering. It's a big site. We know that it's five towers. First offering is going live at 429 doors. Uh, the expectation there, like previous Concord programs, strong local campaign and a strong overseas campaign. They have steam closets uh, in almost every property that they're selling. They also have uh, convertible heated solariums. This is an interesting offering. So this is the ability to, to leverage some of that outdoor space and expand the home. This is center ice, right? And, and it contains over 30,000 square feet of retail. And much of the emphasis are, uh, to, our, to our belief will be placed on, on filling retail that, that supports the community above. Uh, Typically, they do a fantastic job of really thinking about an integrated lifestyle, and, and our belief is, is that there's going to be some amazing vendors there that make living within that building uh, and within that complex very special. So let's turn our attention now to the resale market. It is wild out there. I mean, that, I don't know what else to say. Uh, the, the short story, of course, uh, over 3,700 sales, uh, high demand, low inventory, so our sales are 43% above the 10-year average. Our inventory is 21% below the 10 year average. When demand is high and supply is low, we all know what happens to price. That is the story here. The resale market has been you know, quite active for a while. We're seeing that for sure trickle into the pre-sale market. So we're seeing more sales on the pre-sale side. And we're seeing some people that are preferring pre-sale because they, they are tired of losing out on the homes that they're bidding on in the resale market. So they're turning their attention to pre-sale where it feels actually a bit calmer and that they can take maybe a few extra days to make a decision uh, and it, it definitely feels different than what's happening in the resale market. And that's certainly presenting itself in benchmark price, right? We're up 2.6% from January of 2021. Uh, lack of inventory and intense demand is putting a ton of pressure on price. We're continuing to see those prices just escalate month over month. Uh, I think most notable is just how much detached has improved. You know, 13.7% increase uh, over the last 12 months, that's that's an unbelievable escalation in that period of time. And the belief is that that is going to continue. 45% as an aggregate, 42% for detached, 42% for condos, and 62% still for our townhouse market, which continue to lead the way. Um, you know, again, just high demand, low supply, and, you know, we're seeing it obviously get reflected in the numbers. You know, Susanna, we're beginning to sound like a broken record on this, but at this point in time, there's just absolutely no evidence uh, that we can see that supports the notion that this market's going to slow. The expectation is that we're in a low rate environment. We know that immigration is only going to continue to improve. And we know that there's a massive lack of inventory relative to non-build years in 2019 and 2020. So uh, really exciting about where the spring market is taking us. But our expectation is, is that just keep your seatbelt on because it's going to continue to be a pretty wild ride. Well said, Rai. Uh, so like us, uh, click the links below. Uh, there's lots of data online. Uh, we're happy to share all of that with you. Uh, also, uh, MLACanada.com. Sign up for our daily newswire. That's a uh, daily email in your inbox with all of the latest real estate news in their city. Uh, and I think that's a wrap for uh, another episode of the Pre-Sale Pulse.